up, uh, we have Nikhil performing a piece called Ball is Life. All right, make some noise. This will be the penultimate performance. Penultimate means the second performance before the finale, before the break. Okay, so uh, put your fists up and let's do a three, two, one, speak. Three, two, one, speak. Splash through the net, and boy, it was wet. When I dribble the ball, I can feel it all. They say I wasn't good, and it was just because I was tall. But that's my motivation, to prove them all wrong. I was out in the yard, balling, balling hard. I, w I was playing so good, I could have had my own card. I went out to the park to play on four, four, uh, four on four, and I was jumping so high, I was grabbing every board. The, um, I go out to the, I go home, wait. I go home and catch a night of sleep, and then wake up and go play in the street. Why may you ask when you could be in bed? Well, if I didn't ball, I'd be dead. Keep that love going for Nikhil. Any ballers in here? Got some ballers? Ball is life indeed. For you and your crew. <laughs> also, um, we got one more piece uh, before we take a break. It is uh, seven, one out of 701, and uh, like I said at the beginning, just a reminder, you are free to go uh, exit the space, enjoy the rest of Friday Night Lights, go home, do what you do on a Friday evening, but we will continue the concert uh, after a five-minute break. So uh, next up, we have, am I saying this right, Anav, is it? Anav, Anav, okay. Anav is going to perform his piece called Pollution. Let's give a three, two, one, love. Three, two, one, love. When I step outside my house, I don't like the breeze. I'm not breathing air. I'm breathing gritty dust, cigarette smoke, and intoxicating gasoline. I'm deprived of oxygen. My lungs gasping, my heart racing. My lungs are in a frost, but I can't breathe. But no one can, and that makes me seethe. Imagine a baby smoking two packs of cigarettes. Don't you feel your chest tightening? Don't you feel regret? Regret the people in... Regret that regret we are the ones creating dust and pollution, producing dust, smoke, and de deadly trash consumption. Regret that people in India lose six years of their life or that babies and kids every day feel deprived. Imagine the world slowly losing life, crumpling slowly as it begs for its only rights. The right to survive, the right to live, the right to be free, and the right to be alive. Keep it going, keep it going for enough. Some days, I remember to thank the Lord that he made me a father of two beautiful daughters. And some days, I'm just thankful the Lord gave me the financial leeway to buy my daughter a bike. And one day, I found out that she could ride. She rode her bike with such courage that she could be any 10-year-old boy's ride or die chick after numerous falls and countless calls of, Daddy, don't let go. She finally let go of her insecurities and pedaled as fast as she could as if her life depended on it. And it did. Because a child's life is marked by their ability to conquer their world. Growing from a baby to a young girl, my baby girl doesn't only want to dress up in diamonds and pearls. In fact, she tries super hard to do this thing called a pirouette, which I think is some sort of ballet twirl. You see, you see children are driven towards a greater sense of independence from their first stages. It is written in their biological pages to understand themselves, their surroundings, and how to manipulate their environments until they continue to gain greater ground of how the world is really at their fingertips if they only knew how to harness it and garnish it. Then proceed to varnish it so that it shines like a trinket given from an elderly relative or a locket passed down from great grandparents' pockets and a parent's job. Parents. You're amazing. And a parent's job is to never let their child become one who is ignorant of the simple fact that life has many challenges. But with patience, persistence, love, and faith, she could go anywhere, do anything, and the expanse of earth will be her escape, so no matter where she travels, no one can call her an immigrant. 
And after watching my daughter blaze up and down the laneway with such determination, it only took me a few considerations to make like Beyonce Knowles and take her beyond her goals with an upgrade to a new used bicycle with a slightly larger frame and no training wheels. And when I, when I, when I brought that bike home, hoping it was the right size, I walked upstairs, I woke her up, I took her outside and I yelled, surprise, you should have seen the look in her eyes. She gave me the biggest missing front tooth smile about a mile wide. It's a feeling that can't be compared to none except for the time when the Urban Legend Slam Finals was done. She jumped into my arms, jumped into my arms crying and whispered in my ear, Daddy, you won. Even though she didn't know Daddy came second that night. You see, the reality is I will be a father for the rest of my life. And along with my wife, we have both found profound joy in providing our children their universal rights, the right to be loved and the right to be hugged, the right to eat sweets and the right to muddy feet, the right to a warm bed and the right to be fed. But the most important of these is the right to be free. Free as the glee I see spread across her glowing face. It's a scene that I've seen from witnessing the vastness of the seas and gazing up into never-ending space. It is why I named her Hosnia, a name that means youthful beauty. So that everywhere she goes, her enchanting presence will remind people to be young at heart and to live with grace, a name that holds dignity. So that if ever flagrant men step to her, it will be their duty to treat her with royalty. And even though I have missed many of her creeping, crawling, walking, running, jumping days, I hope that in some small way I have made it up to her by being by her side when she earns her stripes on her bike because some days I remember to thank the Lord that he made me a father of two beautiful daughters and some days I'm just thankful the Lord gave me the financial leeway to buy my daughter a bike and I pray that she continues to live free with no human ever stealing her shine because my beautiful Hasnia, it doesn't matter who you run off with in your lifetime. The memory of you riding your first bike will always be mine. Namaste. Thank you. Please give it up for Tom on the piano. Magical. So that was what you do when you just spontaneously put poetry with music, which is called rhythmic poetry. Remember we learned that in the Spoken Word Workshop? They're like, oh, it's Friday, man. It's too late for that. Memory. I crammed it just for you, Jamal. Uh, thank you very much, Tom. Wow, I didn't, woof, you are gifted. You know, Tom wrote a poem and it was like freestyle, right? And then he goes, oh, I'm not more of a, you know, um, poet, but I do compose. I am a composer. I was like, cool, Tom, come perform still. <laughs> Thank you. So let's get it in. Thank you for those who've stayed to enjoy the rest of the show. You are amazing. You could be anywhere tonight. You're here listening to poetry like, what? Okay, so I think uh, William Shakespeare would be proud. Rumi would be proud. Okay, we're going to do it. Let's take our attention to the screen, and we'll show you another cinepoem before we get back into more spoken word. Thank you. Stepping on that board, looking through my shades. The only thing I can do is think about my day. Listening to my music, hearing my wheels roar. Slamming on the cement, feeling real sore. Thinking about my life, don't want any strife. Healing anger on the board, the only place I can soar. What happens today was my story, the story where I had no glory. As I was growing up, I did not think this is what I would become. I just wanted to fast forward, get rid of all the horror. But then it hit me, the pain, the feeling, the ache, the sickness, the strain. What had I become? I guess skating was a home for my pain. It kept me sane. Today was them, the people, the people in the hallway. I just wanted to walk away. Their voice is still in my ear. All they do is give me more fear. The back talking lies and rumors all still in my head. I really wish I was dead. But skating, that's where it all goes away. When I stop thinking, the only thing there is is the roar of the wheels upon the concrete. Dispressed by the music shouting in my ears, vibrations running through the wood and up to my feet. It's like my own music. I go with the beat. No destination in mind, nowhere specific to go. Never looking behind. I must go on. I must go on. I must skate. Taking a heavy breath while thinking about my death. Drop into the pipe while feeling so right. Getting my anger out while going all out. When I make my buttery trick, I feel so sick. 
Listen to Project Pat, I feel like a skate rat. For me every day is skating, it is the feeling I love. When you're on the board, you think about your life, not your kids, not your wife. I skate all the time, sometimes to get better or to work on my skate line. Doing the tricks represent your life. Do it good or don't do it at all. At least try and make a fall. Use your rage to break that cage. Do a trick, don't be a prick. Every day I get on that board, my past is behind, my future is above. There is one last thing skating does for me. It makes me move on, so my past is gone. Wow, too cool for school. Way too cool for school. Nice tricks on the board, guys, and nice raps, too. I, heard, I, I might have to battle you with some raps later on and then, you know, in the parking lot or something. We'll just get it in. Uh, so how about we get to some more spoken word poetry? You guys feeling all right? It's an amazing thing, poetry. I love it so much. I want to give you some more, but how about we call up Abik? He had a cine poem. He wants to perform it live. He's worked so hard on memorizing it. Let's give power to the poet and invite Abik up to do his poem called Trapped Live. So if you've just joined us, anybody who's just joined us, because you know, we got people filtering and still filling up the, the line, uh, spoken word line. Uh, we're gonna do three, two, one, speak. Ready? Three, two, one, speak. Trapped, trapped, trapped. <clears throat> That's how I feel. Every grudging day, I come to school to watch the kids play. Knowing that when I go home, Expressions seem to just float in the air. Self-expression is not just an obstacle I must conquer. It's a fear. Like speaking my hate about my aunt's mental state or making my parents aware that I am here. Trapped. That's how I feel. Trapped wanting to change the world in my image. No longer in fear. Trapped to destroy ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram. Trapped to eliminate poverty. Trapped to eliminate corruption. Trapped is how I feel. The father of this great nation once said, an eye for an eye makes a whole world blind. Yet when ISIS attacks, we send our own gang to fight back, thinking we are right. Still, USA pursues because they supplied the weapons. And why, you ask? Because they were economically trapped. Trapped like me. Trapped to take back what I've said, what I've done. Trapped in a cage with every bar being an expectation. They say they have not achieved much. Yet I beg to differ. They say the world is a strict place. I have to do better. I have to do better. I need to escape and find the keys to this cage before it's too late, but trapped is how I feel. Keep the love going for a beak. A nice, loud round of applause. For some of, the, some of these youth speaking and expressing themselves uh, such, in such a poetic way is a difficult task because now they're on stage and performing it. So we gotta make sure if they drop a line, Give them a snap, right? Don't forget the snap. It's such an uh, empowering thing. It tells them that we're here for you. We're here. We believe in you. Next up, we have Anushka performing an entitled piece. Can everybody bring Anushka? I have a feeling this is going to be a great piece. I don't know. Normal is boring, many say, but when Mr. or Mrs. Griffin walk in, someone who might be two sizes bigger or has a unique style of clothing, we all turn our heads away. Why? Why don't we think more on what their attire reveals about them? Why don't we think, ask more about where the person's from? Why do we turn a blind eye to their personality because they don't dress like us? Why can't we see the person beneath the covers of what we wear because our clothes are only an extension of how we feel? So what about someone who dresses like us, would buy me a few sizes bigger and can wear skinny jeans and doesn't fit into a small size? Are we so blind that we can't see with our eyes that outside of their size, their interests might lie in the same mind as ours and we're missing out on a great friendship? So I say don't turn away, but accept them and learn to love them because sometimes Mr. or Mrs. Different might just be the best thing that happened to us. Yeah. Keep it going for Anushka. Anushka. 